Yeah, like if you get any. Yeah, I was an old sheep ridiculous. herder man. He put mm-hmm. he just, he just made yeah. things hard. Sheep. Herder. Yeah, like like in golf, you know. Oh, okay. Like, like he must. Those course designers, like they're they're like old old guys. They're long long passed away. They designed the courses hundred hundred years ago mm-hmm. or something. But it, in today's game, it makes it hard. Like they put little bumps in the fairway and stuff. Wow. You know. Mine's from Scotland, you know. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Played the first. That's the first time I played with a hunter's ball. Come on, Dalton. Yeah, he, he hit the ball. Oh. <laughs> He hit it. I know. The bad all the time. That's why I, I know. He, I was. He's a club thrower. Man. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, like, buddy, I'm out here to relax. Got to get so mad. <laughs> You're the same as her, huh? Yeah, we played that that scratch tour thing last weekend. He won it. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Thanks for coming to our uh, pre commission meeting today. Uh, if you'll notice, don't forget we have our CRA board meeting at 4 p.m. on. Uh, Tuesday, and that'll be followed by the budget workshop at 4.30, and then we have our commission meeting following that at, the, at 5.30. Let's look at our agenda. Of course, agenda item number three, four, will be public hearings for the uh, tax roll budget, et cetera, and also for the CRA. So if there any questions, any questions about any of that before we so when we do the budget do we have to decide about the splash pad before we approve that or how's that going to work from a monetary perspective yeah okay so that's the time we're gonna i know we'll discuss it today but mm-hmm. that's when we have to make a determination yes, whether to put a hundred thousand yes, dollars towards that or not yeah. yeah and that's your last chance to i mean you're adopting the final budget so it's your last chance to make any amendments okay Okay, and I think we can, I guess, direct it to be added today and then vote on it that day. I think it's in there, isn't it? It is in there. It's, it's in there. Mm. In there right now. Okay. And yeah, we'll the vote on that on Tuesday. Yeah. So you want to make we'll vote on that on Tuesday. Yes, so if you want to make any amendments, it'll be Tuesday night. Okay. All right, consent agenda. Uh, anything on the consent agenda? Obviously, we got the minutes for the city manager to sign a settlement agreement for Vasta versus Lynn Haven. Everybody okay with that? So, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. So the most that we're paying is twenty five hundred, right? We're just paying yes. the deductible. Yes. Right. Twenty five hundred for what? Vasta? Are we talking about? Yeah. It was just we're just paying the deductible, Deduct- and the settlement looked like a, a nuisance value. It was really it was like seventy five hundred combined. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what it's about. Combined. Is it in well, here? Yeah. Is the whole thing in here? No, not the whole. Not thing. not what the I don't know. I don't know what's about either. But I went to Bay County Court records and brought it up. I read most of it. Okay. And so we're going to vote on whether to pay. No, just on the city manager. Just they, off on it. Yeah, they they settled that mediation for a, a nuisance amount. So. Okay. And from what I understand, this is like all the way back in like 2013. 17. Right, originally. 2017. Mm-hmm. Very long. How long ago was that, Jennifer? You can come up and give it. was actually 2013. Ooh. Yeah, um, that's a long time ago. Yeah. The, it was filed in court in 2017 yeah. within one day of the statutes of limitations running. Um, no. It is a nuisance claim. And actually, technically, the insurance company could approve it without they have the authority but we like to bring this information to the commission just so they're informed. Um, there was, uh, it really was just let's let it go away. And this was a, the decision of the insurance carriers. Um, they, they basically ran it. I was present for the mediation, which did last about six hours. Yeah. But... And we're only talking twenty five hundred. Yeah, said. we just paid the twenty five hundred dollar deductible. That's I just have to bring this up. You know, the last one that we did, and we voted to give that guy twenty seven thousand or whatever it was. That kid, remember that fell up the splash pad? Well, tiller, tiller, tiller. Yeah. Was... yeah, the week before, that ten year old and his father were mountain climbing. <laughs> well, and that's so I felt like we paid injury. for their vacation. Mm-hmm. Huh? No, that was for a previous injury and yeah. some of the medical bills that that occurred for those previous injuries. The good thing is that he did have a recovery because at the time of the accident, it was far more egregious and the um, potential for continued harm was greater. 
-hmm. You're talking about the boy? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Even so, though he went mountain climbing the week mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Not the week well, before the injury. Well, the accident would have been years ago. Years that, yeah. 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 It was two to three years before that the actual accident. Yeah. So, wow. Well, I'm assuming this officer doesn't work for us anymore. He's not. <laughs> no, he used. Was... That was the whole night. Yeah. yeah, I know. All of ours. Yeah. That's all, all right. I have. Yeah, that's me too. Have our old business. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is basically just the annexation of those properties. We did hear from the the developer or the engineering on that. Any additional questions on those? Moving on to new business, uh, discussion of possible approval, of resolution approving uh, an amendment to the employment agreement, City Attorney. Yeah, so the existing uh, city manager contract expires January 13th of next year. And in there, there's a term that says at least three months prior to the expiration, the parties are supposed to try to negotiate an extension. And so it's about that time. So I talked to uh, uh, Jennifer and came up with a um, an amendment it's the same uh, same terms just have been it just adds four years to the contract but the salary and all the other provisions are exactly the same um, I know and that's just the way you handle it just do a do an amendment to the contract and extend the term and if there's any other changes you would put those in that amendment but we just recognize what her current salary is that was approved a couple of Decembers ago and did an extension of the term any questions about and that would start in January. I had one question. Do you already receive COLA every year? Yes, ma'am. So that's not, that doesn't change anything. I mean, you're still making 140000 I received the COLA. That's in the contract. Yeah. Right. So and that's so, base salary is 140 Okay. That's the base salary, and that never changes. So, Unless and how much, is, how much is, um, what's the max on COLA? Is it 5%? No, I think we only had about 3% in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, I there's a there's a ceiling, right? No, ma'am. When you guys vote on the uh, uh, budget, budget, yeah, there's a three percent in there for all employees. Okay. Are you comfortable personally with a four year contract? That just seems like an awful long time to me. Yes, ma'am. I'm very very comfortable with that. Yes. So the only suggestion I would make is I wish we had this earlier. It says within three months you have to make an agreement. So, like, let's just well, you have to neg start negotiating an agreement within three months. We're actually plan. so it it starts again in January. So we're what four months. Mm -hmm. So we're we're so about no less than three months. Prior. <laughs> right. So we're, like we're four months. That's when you start negotiating. So oh, yes. that's, oh, so you could wait until oh, you can wait until January. You, you have until January thirteenth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before it expires. Yeah. So the way I read it was we got to do it. Yeah. That's mm. what I read okay. too. Mm. Right. That's the, they just want you to, yeah, you know, get it on your radar three at least three months prior. Okay. So we're four months right now. So start at least three months prior. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. If there were any negotiation, but the contract is not changing. But she's not right. asking for any changes okay. other than her term. All right. Anything else? All right. Number seventeen will be a part of the judicial public hearing. The discussion of possible approval of application for developing order for the parcel for the major smokehouse LLC. Um, any questions on that? I brought all that paperwork to the last meeting. I, the only, not the only, two two things, if I'm reading it correctly, is all the work we're doing on Highway 77, and this restaurant is going to have its back facing Highway 77. The rear of the restaurant's facing Highway 77. Oh with the front facing Pennsylvania. I, it, to me, it just seems so odd. What's that gonna look like coming across the bridge? Especially with her. I know what the back of a restaurant a, looks like, uh, and so do you. Especially a smokehouse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the color, if the colors are close to anything like what I saw in the diagram, it looks like beach colors. It looks like teal and hot pink or something like that. I'm not sure they of any of them. work on the bill 77. Which you will have landscaping buffers. So there'll be water on 77 with bushes around it. it am I right on the colors? Okay. The colors. Wow, what? 
If y'all will come up. Teal so, Lincoln. Thank you. Those colors on the landscaping map. I think that's mm -hmm. just as a. I had that map with me last yeah, week. Yeah, I didn't. I wonder if you're talking yeah. about those oh, ones. Down this here. Is that? Uh, I think that's just like a legend type thing. Is that what you're talking about? No, I actually have the colors and the pictures of the buildings and everything. I can bring it to you. Check it out, Chip. Remember reading that? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Have to wait back. Um, while staff is addressing that, um, any other questions on that particular issue? <clears throat> All right. Number, what number are we on? Number seventeen. Okay. So they're they're gathering information for you. Number seventeen. They're still in the major smokehouse. Can't uh, find the color information right now. I'll answer. Yeah, because I don't remember seeing the colors on anything. It's yeah, like I have a whole class. sheet and it's got the colors of the drawings from the front sides and really? back. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I got it. Somebody obviously gave it to yeah, me. Yeah, I've got some uh, revisions to meet the CRA requirements from the freshman who we received. Yeah. So, um, but I know that it met, I'm gonna do the it met the CRA for all the drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody else has any issue with the back of it, Basin 77. Hmm. It will be the only business on the corridor that faces the back, the back yeah. bit. I never yeah. really thought about it, to be honest with you. We go down. Yeah. One of the planning board members came and we talked about it. Yeah, I mean, you're, if it's the back, I mean, that's where they're smoking meat. Mm -hmm. Ben. Just to uh, clarify on the color selection, um, the CRA requires either to go with muted pastel tones or earth tone colors. So if you look up muted pastel, mm -hmm. it can be a light blue, light green, or it can be the whole term, just the intensity of the color could be muted. So, so it could be pink and teal, just a muted color of it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Any additional questions or discussions on that one? No. All right. Number 18, proposed amendments to the uh, Midland Heavy Unified Development Code, adding a section regarding Deer Point Reservoir Protection Zone. This will be first reading by title only. All right. Uh, the, the county approached us a few months ago. There's already a Deer Point Protection Zone up there in unincorporated Bay County. Um, the city has. Our boundaries approach that's kind of at the top of the bayou park and preserve that area if you think about it and so there's some areas that we could annex in in the future and so the county just wanted to be sure that the city had the same uh, reservoir protection so it's consistent with what the county has and, uh, and that's all we did so that way in the event we do annex around there a little bit um, we'll have the same uh, protections in place for the deer point reservoir that matches the county so it's something they they asked us for. We looked at it. Nobody saw any problems with it. Um, they'll just have to comply with with those. Uh, Does that have anything to do with the uh, projects out on three eighty nine? The back door of those things, because I know they talked about going over that way. No, this yeah. would be this would be like getting close to the the the, the, the dam road and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think there's still a little bit of Hutchison property up there. Right. right. Yeah. Any more questions on that one? And number 19, discussion of possible approval, approving the state funded grant agreement with FDOT for road improvements, and authorizing city managers to execute that agreement. And that's the legislative paving? Paving. Right. Yeah. There's a. Uh, they approved a $2 million project with a $1 million mm -hmm. grant. Right, so that's, this is um, to approve the grant agreement for the million dollars. So we pay a million, they pay a million. Uh, up to. So it depends what the paving project comes mm -hmm. in at, but it's up up to mm -hmm. $2 million and they would do up to a million. Okay. And is there a particular road in mind? 
They're I yes, they're they're listed they're, in they're there. Listed in here. Okay. Um, I guess it's called phase three of our legislative paving. Yeah. Um, so you can see actual the road road segments. Yes. Uh, some of Moat School Road, Wisconsin, Wisconsin um, Iowa. 390 to 17th, mm -hmm. Iowa, 14th so. Street, State Road, 390 to 17th, so. Mosley Drive from Minnesota to east of Oak Ridge, 17th Street from State Road 77 to Iowa <coughs> Avenue, 8th Street Circle, and Carolina Avenue from 6th Street to 5th Street. You know those are all over the place, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know those three roads that are, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's not asphalt, it's like a different surface area. You know what I'm talking about? It's almost like you can see the, the rocks in it. The millie. The millie. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where those are at on the list? Off the top of your head. No, I do not. <laughs> Bobby, do you have any? No, we just like over on 2nd Street. Street. Yeah. I think so. Stuff you don't want to ride a bike on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we're trying to repair the, the bad ones. Actually, those are in pretty good shape. They're rough. They're right. Rough. They don't crack and fall apart like regular ones. Yeah. And a lot of them we still got to do utility. So you don't want to do the road and then have to do utility. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's no... where the grading of the roads comes in. If the utility still we work, we don't. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think those roads they don't have. They're not hooked up to the city sewer. Some of them are not. Yeah. That was one of the feedback I got from the residents there about the roads and that, so that's why I asked. So I appreciate it. Any additional questions on that agenda item? No. So that's our agenda for Tuesday. Uh, like we said, we would discuss uh, splash pads today. So I guess the, the table is open for a uh, splash pad discussion. Um, Come on, Jim. From the city manager. What's that? Any input regarding the splash pads? Um, Commissioner Aldridge is not here, here today, and I know he wanted to definitely discuss it. We just wanted to really bring to your attention um, a lot of the concerns we have. Um, we spend a lot of time trying to man the splash pad, um, we spend a lot of energy. Um, trying to just find people to work it. If you just look at last week's Facebook post where we had to cancel because the person who was a part-timer couldn't work, all the rest of the people that part-timers are not, you know, really not connected with the city, <coughs> couldn't get anyone to work, but we had this big opening day, you know, almost a thousand people out there. And so we did have to um, close it. And of course, residents got, you know, some of them got really upset. Most residents are very, very understanding. Um, but we do spend a lot of time, main, you know, doing maintenance on the splash pad. Um, there are a lot, there are definitely accidents. I think right now, um, this year, we've had about six. And then we anticipate, anticipate probably two will, will probably bubble up to maybe a lawsuit. Um, because child fell out there for some reason. Uh, another, and, and that's one of the reasons you need that person there, several reasons to make them, ask them to stop running, ask parents to be more attentive to their children, make sure food is not brought into um, the splash pad, make sure water, you cannot bring anything in there that is a risk of, a, of contamination. Um, and so we cannot have that on that end. Um, that uh, splash pad is under sports and recs and um, we are now getting back from Hurricane Michael that we're getting back on track with all of the uh, sports activities and other activities that um, you know kind of went a little bit beside the wayside because of Hurricane Michael so as you can see every year we're building with um, our, our teams and our all of our activities we want to bring those things back we want the kids and people to move here to have some good quality of life but in order to do that um, we also have to make sure that the splash pad is is manned and so we balance um, Jen spends a lot of time the director spends a lot of time 
we balance and trying to get people to work that splash pad. In the summertime, it's even harder, of course, because it's hot. You know, you, you, you got to sit out there for at least anywhere from four to six, sometimes eight hours. If someone calls in, then you may have to, to work that entire shift. Um, and so that is a, it costs a lot of money. And then Joe brought to our attention about um, the splash pad itself and the repair that this one at Kinsall is going to need and eventually the one at Ken Griffin is going to need as well and we're we're looking at of course at least a hundred thousand dollars and that's just on the repair side that's not talking about um, manning it um, all of the chlorine all of all of the other maintenance that goes with this splash pad but our biggest challenge right now is trying to keep it um, manned by part-time people. So I guess a couple of questions I have, um, one would be for, for Kevin is, are there any liability waivers that we can put in place for individuals that want to use the splash pad? Yeah. Enter at your own risk. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, obviously like any sort of public pool, I mean, and I don't know what signage is up there, but I mean, we probably have. We have every we'll, rule we'll have to look. We probably have all that signage, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you could go a step further and get you know, written liability waivers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Does it stop you from getting sued? No, but it gives you the defense to say, you know, hey, you came here and you yeah, signed right. this. I mean, it can, it can help. Just wonder if it would give us, you know, a little more insulation. It could. You know, yeah, it could. For sure. Regarding that. And Jennifer probably can talk a little bit about, um, um, and I'll ask her to come forward too, just to give you a little bit more background as well. Mayor, we could do liabilities, but from an insurance standpoint, we are still liable for all of our yeah. properties. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I'm asking if we have a rule that says no running, you sign a liability waiver and your child is still running and our attendant asks your child to stop running and then you sue us for whatever because you're still breaking all the rules. Yeah, I mean, it will help with, you again, you still get sued, I mean, you still have yeah. the liability, but we it will, it will settle, help your defense. We might settle yeah. like we do all of them, but yeah. it does not stop or the response if they're injured and they seek medical coverage. So that how many, do you have a general idea of how many lawsuits we receive through the splash pads? Well, this year we have um, six accidents that have been posted, have been completed. Two that resulted in uh, hospital uh, medical treatment. <coughs> no claims to date, no, nothing filed, though I've been told that parents have um, secured counsel, mm -hmm. which That's means it too. could come within the next um, three to four years. I don't know what the statute of limitations is. For yeah, that. negligence is a four-year statute of yeah. limitations. I mean, you could have an accident today and not see the lawsuit for four years. Are they all at Kinsall or are some at King Griffin? No, yeah, they're at both. They're oh, both, both equally as, as uh, uh, challenging mm -hmm. to ensure safety. So it, do we have, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Do we have trouble getting help at Kinsall? Or, I mean, I'm sorry, King Griffin. Uh, it's, it, when you work, you work both of them. So it doesn't matter. We, you know, you may work at King Griffin. You may work at Kinsall. Um, it, the trouble is just finding that. And do we have the, do we have the ability, like what you said, kids running the parents on their phone, kids running, the attendant says you need to stop running. Do we have the authority to just ask them to leave? Is there, yeah. And our attendants can do that during the summer. Keep in mind the the largest pool of applicants mm -hmm. are teenagers. Right. Uh, so students. you're putting a 16 or 17 year old up against a parent. Yeah. They do have the opportunity when someone is unruly to call for police assistance, but that's taking our police away mm -hmm. from other duties. Right. Um, what about in addition, the with the teenagers, I, we can only work them yes. four and a half hours without a required break. Therefore, we do try to do shifts. Mm -hmm. um, what about the veterans program? They not only place veterans, but they pay them. We, we wouldn't even have to pay them. For a short period of time, that could happen. Of course, all of those would have to be vetted, and all of ours are vetted for um, working with children, all adults. I cannot do that for juveniles. Mm -hmm. It's another issue. Mm -hmm. We can't run backgrounds on juveniles. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it, it is a challenge, and a challenge of two different locations, 
And when someone doesn't show up, it's got to be manned, which typically right. falls on our full-time employees who either takes them away from their regular scheduled work or puts them in overtime status. I'll be, I'll be happy to give you that veterans. I talked to the lady for quite some time this week, and they take veterans that, you know, obviously need work. We could get Jamie to come over there on Saturdays, and uh, I'll do it whether I'm better or not. There you go. <laughs> and um, but they and they pay them. The program pays the vets. And then keep in that mind, you hire. Keep in mind, in the summertime, that's the most difficult time to find people. I've I've worked there when we couldn't when you know someone called in waiting for someone else to come. It is very very hot out there, mm -hmm. and you do have to be very attentive. Mm -hmm. um, I will be honest with you, parents are not very nice when you tell their children to stop running. Or, um, th th like that's, I, don't know they, I don't know if they'd want me out there. Though. I know. I want, <laughs> yeah. One weekend. I, I, yeah. 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 One weekend. I, yeah. I have um, daycares that bring their entire yeah. um, set Our of children class. out there. Yeah. And then that takes up that bathing load. And so now you got to turn people away because, you know, they can't come in because the daycares, you know, are, they have their, the kids out there. They sit, you know, under the, under the um, shade. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have to constantly say we need to make sure that we're watching this person or that. So we have that all the time. Can we ask the daycares? I didn't realize they were bringing whole classes out there. Can we ask we'll them to reserve? Well. Can we ask them to call ahead? No. It's just very difficult to do that because then you have, and, and most of the child care centers are not here in Lynn Haven mm -hmm. um, because now you have residents that come and want to be a part of it and they can't get in because mm -hmm. you have a whole fake here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have we considered possibly uh, alternating opening and closing of the various parks? Maybe this one's open this week, this one's open the next week, or... So many days open for this one, so many days open for that one. Maybe that'll give more time for maintenance on the other part. Mm -hmm. um, while it, you know, maybe even limit how many people are able to utilize the park and even hopefully help us secure mm -hmm. someone to be an attendant for the park. So. Yes, that has definitely been discussed this year because I will tell you, um, Jennifer has even had to reach out to staff members, other staff members to say, hey, can you just work this weekend? Um, I think one of the things that we are looking at for next year is that we cannot continue a six day opening. Um, that's just impossible with two splash parks. And so that means that we're going to have to look at how we can exactly what you said, um, manage the schedule um and and maybe do some um alternating between the two um and 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 that that kind of uh stuff will will probably work a little bit better because right now we're doing six day schedules um with one day for maintenance i think one day is not enough um and uh, it and again looking at um both of those splash pads and how we manage both the both of them have we would it be feasible for us to consider maybe adding a splash pad only position or positions to the budget for this year so we that, actually those are in there seasonal positions in the budget right um, but i mean someone because if we're saying that's what we've been doing in the past and that hasn't been working can we have someone that we can say okay hey, permanent you mean like more of a permanent person and then maybe they can since it's on a sports and rec and they can drift over to sports and rick whenever splash pad season is over and then come back to splash pads whenever that season comes back that's certainly a decision for the commission in terms of the numbers of positions what you do need to keep in mind is when you go from seasonal to either part-time or full-time the impact on the city includes benefits mm -hmm. uh, participation in the pension so all of those costs Right. I mean, we can do a study and tell you exponentially how much more it will cost to man, fully man it with um, either full-time staff and what will they do on the off-season, or even part-time staff, what will they do on the off-season. Mm -hmm. um, those staff members will earn leave, which means then we are managing, do they take a day off or not? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is something that I would certainly be able to mm -hmm. look at but it's just not an hour to hour comparison when you move to a different class of employee. So is that something that we could look at to, I guess, to have better numbers? 
so we can have a better because right now what i guess what i'm saying is right now what we're doing isn't working mm -hmm. oh, i agree so we have we're gonna have to create another solution or just hope that what we're <clears throat> continue to do what we're doing just hope that it works next year so so just let me add that if you add two full-time people one for kinsaw one for Ken, uh Kane. But if we're alternating then that person could just go back and forth between the two yes if we're alternating so if say you have Kane griffin open for three days and you have kinsaw open for three days that's six days that person will have to work when you does that have at least two. you got to have at least two people so you're going to have to still even if you did a full-time person for two full-time people you're still going to have to have at least three to four part-time people so that that person can have days off they may call in six so you gotta you gotta have that that cushion there to make sure that it continues to run but and honestly um working it's it's a nine and a half hour shift to go from opening what we ran last summer <clears throat> what are the hours uh, it start we open at 10, 10. And that means someone has to be on site starting everything at 9 45 and it closes at 5 which means there's some they have close to stay there to 5 15. um <clears throat> to put them in in that kind of weather and heat one i have a safety concern so i need to make sure that there's some breaks um interjected there so that they have some relief um, because again there's no lunch period broken into that we were running at a morning shift and an afternoon shift to get around lunch breaks or any kind of breaks too and it's not insurmountable but these are the things i would have to think through in terms of scheduling and if they have to close it down because of weather that means that person's not getting paid because they can't go well, to work if, if they were on on salary if they're on hourly rate they will they'll just return to a place mm -hmm. here and do mm -hmm. some work or sit mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't cut they wouldn't be on leave without pay they would be still under the auspices of employment mm -hmm. and what the part-time people hour? wouldn't get paid if they were they wouldn't get paid <laughs> right. but if we're talking about adding full-time permanent right. people yes we in, we're ending the um season at eleven dollars an hour eleven dollars and thirty cents an hour excuse me next year it will have to go up to comply with uh, the minimum requirements mm -hmm. um, that are required by the, the law that went into effect so next year it will have to go up to 15 15 no, by no, no dollar every year it's not expired <laughs> until 2026 but there has to be an increase in rate Mm -hmm. um, the other challenge is if we, if we go up an hourly rate, that might draw some interest, but it's still a limited number of hours if we do it as a seasonal position. Right. Meaning it's got to be someone who is okay working approximately 12 to 15 hours a week, which for some people that's perfect, mm -hmm. uh, for others that's not enough. Mm -hmm. and, and what is the load? How many people can be in there at a time? About 50. Um, for Kinsaw, it's close to, I think it's 48, if I'm not mistaken. And then at um, King Griffin, I, I think, think it's, it's 50 52, yeah, 52, somewhere. Yes. Which if there were 52 in, or 48 or 50 in any of those splash pads, they're packed. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a value engineering um, solution possibly to go? Is there, I'm going to say something that, you know, might be controversial, but what if, what if uh, took pieces and parts and closed one and it, and it helped expand the other one or um, the, one in, the one in town further away from the water and, and, uh, and then created something that uh, could possibly be a, a small recreation area. I've seen, I've seen, uh, just a little walkway with fountains and and it just you know it, it enhances an area and sometimes kids play in and sometimes they don't in, in Cocoa Florida I've seen this but um, um, is that I mean Joe I don't mean to put you on the spot but I mean for a hundred thousand dollars to repair something could, could it possibly could we possibly make some kind of shift there and make it better at one place and do away with the other and then and then use our, everything we're kicking around about staffing to just focus on one splash pad, uh, you know, for the future. And then, and then, uh, 
re-enhance Kinsall Park, so to speak. Has that been thought about or kicked around at all? Um, we have. Actually, the, there was a discussion amongst the city commission whenever the splash pad uh, was discussed, and originally it was um, the original plan was only to build a splash pad at Kinsall Park, but mm -hmm. there was some strong <laughs> voices in the community to also build us. If you recall, I think it actually I started at Sports Complex. The Sports Complex. That's that's yeah. where it was. That's I recall that, I, and this is honest to gosh truth. I recall okay. at that meeting when that got voted on, that Kinsall was a go, and then at the budget meeting, uh, City Manager Michael White threw in another three hundred thousand for one at Kane Griffin. There was no discussion, to my knowledge at all, because I remember, I think you were at that meeting, if you were over there, and I said, hold it, where did the other one come from? Why are we doing two? So I don't know if that was, if there was a lot of discussion that was between him and somebody else. I, I remember, I remember at one point there was a discussion that they were actually going to have three splash That's pads. Right. That's and I was exactly. like, holy cow. They were talking about up at Sports Park with the water yeah, issue. Yeah, the, the, actually, the, the, the first <laughs> splash pad was going to start at the sports complex. Yeah. And then um, the good discussion was, let's move it in town to where people can can have it and be accessed. Yeah. And it was Kinsall. Um, and so um, city officials uh, went out and looked at a splash pad over in Destin and came back and said, okay, it's going to cost about $300,000 for this splash pad at Kinsall. Mm -hmm. And then um, there was more discussion about having an additional splash pad. Um, and um, a motion was made by, um, in the commission meeting, let's add a splash pad at Kane Griffin Park for an additional $100,000, which took it to a little bit over $400,000. Uh, I went back and you know just wanted to read the minutes, and I actually remembered this as well. So it was um, definitely discussion with um, you know the the previous council that was in place and city officials. And I think a lot of the reason that there was there was a mud issue at the sports complex. Yeah, Kids getting yeah. done playing ball and then being out in the mud and the dirt and getting in the splash pad that was going to be an issue. And I think Greg Kidwell spoke to that as far as the filtering system. That was an issue. And also, the whole thing about the Kinsall Park was that kids could ride down there without having to cross 77. You know, they could ride down there on their bikes or whatever. And they couldn't do that at Sports Park. Commissioner Ward. So, first uh, thing I wanted to ask was, as far as kids getting hurt, is why are they getting hurt? Is it just from them running and falling? Yeah, they don't follow the rules. Neglect. And a lot of times, you're exactly right, Commissioner Tender. Parent neglect. Yeah. <laughs> There's really nothing else we can do to prevent any of that. No, the only thing the tender can do is ask them to stop running. Um, they have tried in, in, in the past to, you know, just address that and... Um, Attendants get pushed back from parents who tell them not to um, address their child. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, again, as Jen said, it, it, we have younger people working there. Sometimes that get intimidated by parents that are there. Right. And oh, yes. um, it um, causes for them to, to try to be very kind. But you really, in order to just... Um, mitigates many of the accidents, you, you're, you're going to have to be a little bit stern. Yeah. And, and Commissioner, they are children. Yeah, I know. Yep. They and are. it's slippery. Once it gets wet, it's slippery. Um, I thought we put a coating on it. We they did. did not do yeah. that. Yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe did that. Unless you walk, if, if right. you haven't walked out there, yeah, right. it's yeah. slippery. Yeah. Um, which is the reason for the no running, but... Mm -hmm. Think yeah, I tried to play in there and they kicked me out. No, I know. <laughs> I've seen kids sitting on the playing and trying to deliberately stop, stop the, the water, water from coming up. And uh, I walked over and told you yes. to get going. Yes. <laughs> and they go. <laughs> um, get up off that thing. That's not what you're here The other for. question I have. I have a job have... for you this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to work there one weekend, but I'd have to have uh, 
Chief Ramey on call. He's behind you. Oh, yeah. I got your back. <laughs> You'd have to have my back because they'd be coming after me. Well, okay, yeah. in trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other question I have is do we have any idea how much extra it costs us with our insurance premiums having the splash pads? I know it's probably hard to yeah. break down, isn't it? it? They won't break it down. All they say is, oh, you have a splash pad? Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, they say, oh, you have, two? you have two. Um, I can tell you. You're talking about three? <laughs> um, the cost um, for damages to the splash pad, they, you see that in, in the increase in uh, premiums. Uh, but again, it's all based on what's yeah. called loss runs. Yeah, um, it's hard to break it down how much. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I actually went out. Um, with Mr. Footen and Mr. Kidwell, had them show me, you know, what is wrong with it. And uh, they showed me, and I was kind of surprised because I went by there and I was closed in one day because I didn't look at what their hours were. And uh, I'm like, I don't see what's wrong with it. And they showed me, and uh, the city has done a really good job trying to, to seal it, to keep it going. But my concern is, I think, when I was originally built, if you look, it's in a low lying area. And uh, all that storm water comes in and it creates voids underneath. I don't want to take away your thunder here, Joe, but it's create a lot of voids underneath. And he showed me where they sealed it and you put your feet on both sides of it and you shift your weight both ways and you can, you can actually see the surface moving up and down. And what I don't want to happen is we redo it and then four or five years, we got to redo it again. So I don't know if it's, because then I asked about King Griffin, I was like, well, what about that? We're going to have to do that next year. And it looks like that one's actually in really good shape from my understanding. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about that, hopefully, anytime in the near future. Yeah, that's a newer one because after Hurricane Michael, um, we were able to go in and right. fix a lot of that and add a a little bit more for bathing load. Yeah. Um, and so that is a, a newer one. But Kinsall really is the one where we have a lot of problems. And and we're spending what is it about two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain both these both of these. Pads. It's. I know nobody wants to hear it, but I know a lot of people. Um, they're not happy about stormwater, and I don't blame them. They should be upset about it. I'm upset about it. And I just, I see how much we're spending on these, and the question is, is it sustainable? And I think that's what we really need to do, dig deep down and look at is it sustainable. Well, I think one of the things that uh, Commissioner Perno um, posed, and it's something that asked the city manager about, is... Did you close one and make that into more of a recreational area, maybe a pickleball court? Yeah. Um, and and then just focus on the one that's at Kane Griffin, maintaining that one. Having, you know, I think even if we had to add employee, additional employees, it would be less. Right. Because you're only having one versus having to try to man two. And even maybe taking some of those funds and maybe diverting some of that to stormwater um, or to another area which needs you know, more financial support so All right but if you look at where the concession stand is at Kinsaw and you look at where the the splash pad is it's like Much it's got to be about, about one to two feet higher yeah. like, yes with the splash pads where it was built it was absolutely correct the low line area has water underneath it we had broken pipes underneath the slab because <clears> it was moving back and forth and when we get that kind of force pressure coming out of two inch pipe it washes the dirt out underneath it. Sure. The whole concrete pad has cracked and it looks like it's going into a bowl. So you can walk around and like you said, you can hit the voids underneath it, you can step on it, you've got water coming up. We have a major issue, even if we fix it, I'm concerned that down the road because the ground itself is a low lying area. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid these problems are going to come back again. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. I'm curious, um, are we still selling burgers and all that kind of stuff? What kind of income do we make off that? So um, we know, yeah, we, we actually gave that to a vendor, Joyce um, Morris Enterprises, I think, which she runs the concession stand. Mm -hmm. And then um, we get 18%, I think, of whatever she makes during the season. And um, then she pays us rent for 250 or 500 a month. 5%. 5%. And she paid her um, rent for the entire, entire year, year in advance. Wow. In advance. 
So they man that. And that would even be a greater problem if we did not. And that was one of the reasons we went back to the vendor so that we knew that, you know, now that all of these things are coming back on board, we needed to try to focus our attention on splash pad. Mm -hmm. So that has taken some of the pressure off of us. So, you know, she mans the, the, the concession, but she's not always open, which is a good thing because sometimes there's only one person in there. I mean, um, you know, early in the morning. Um, on the weekends, it's it, it can be very, very crowded. But um, I think just looking at probably the way we open it, our times, um, that may be something that we will definitely look at for, for um, next fiscal year. So, I guess at this point, we're saying continue to repair Kinsaw and then just try to alternate, try to keep both of those operating for the next season. Are we saying close Kinsaw? Let's focus on Kane Griffin. I think we need to discuss it, let the public in on it. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to provide input. Um, it's just, uh, I just don't see it being sustainable. That's my problem. I mean, I, I know it's, um, a lot of people are emotionally involved with it, but, um, I just, but we have one. It's more than most cities. Right. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Uh, and then why not, why not let's, uh, let's, before we spend the money, let's, <laughs> let's, let's look at the feasibility of pieces and parts from one and and what we can do to enhance kins all otherwise yeah you know that's what, what it, we should be looking at i think it probably costs money for someone to come out look at it and see how much it would cost to to build it up in that could we sell could we sell like the slide and all the parts to it yeah yeah that or question. use it or use it at the other place is there room over there to increase the size of that one? Uh, it's packed in. Mm, it's you know, Ken Griffin. But some of the fixtures um, that we could utilize the equipment that actually runs the back, we could put it in storage and save it as backups. All right. But the other thing I did. Pickleball. Hence the other pad. Everybody's bugging mm. me about pickleball. And, I, and I that's going to come too. I was thinking this was going to come up. I'm surprised it hadn't. Is, do we want to start charging people to use a splash? Oh, yeah, I, I did ask city manager about that. Um, what we start, what we charge oh. young residents, uh, maybe a season pass or something right. like that for, for utilizing the splash pads. Keep in mind when you're talking about taking keys, it would either need to be a kiosk uh, because you, you have an attendant who's going to be having to handle cash, taking yeah. three cards. They're also been they are exposed to someone who may want to take that money from them. I'd have to be working right. with the chief. I would, I would require them to pay it online. I mean, just, yeah. and I would say because everybody has cell phones now, just be on, if that's something we decide to do, just it's an online payment, online sign up, include that liability waiver in there. And um, that's just make, exactly what I was going to bring up. And make them just, you know, just for the non-residents, everything just, just be online so that we would, wouldn't have to worry about Having that kiosk there. I mean, the I'm sure we can work up a fee schedule for a season. I would hate to have a daily fee schedule, and the the complications that that comes comes with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I bet you'd still have to have somebody out there with a club. Yes, when people drove from the yes, beach and they go, "What do you mean? I have to get online yes, to get a season back?" You're absolutely correct. That would be a so I, 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 yeah, We'd have to really plan that one out. Right, I get that. Um, but I like the uh, the one part of the uh, of it I do like is what you brought up is if we did a season pass they could sign the, the liability waiver yeah. and that would probably protect us more right yeah, we yeah. Have a little, little more to bite to it. Yeah, you shouldn't assume that's a protection. Oh, I know it's not going to be hundred percent. Liability waiver is basically the worth of the piece of paper. Yeah, and then we would just do that in terms of allowing people to come in. It would be just like when we give away sand the sandbags. If you are a citizen, you show your ID where you live here in the city of Haven, and then that person would go in with their children. Is that what you're, you're, you're thinking? Because you said non-residents. Right, that the non-residents could, you know, could basically, you know, pay for the pass. Mm -hmm. And then, because the residents are already paying for it, that's taxes. exactly right. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, the non-residents. Residents, yes. Yeah, I'm saying the residents are already paying for it <laughs> through, their, through their taxes. And the non-residents, which 
from what I'm seeing, the majority of the complaints that we're receiving are from non-residents mm -hmm. when it comes that a 43? to 43. It was built with impact fees, isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, it was actually built um, through surtax money, if I'm not mistaken, Bobby. That was built through that. I, I went back. I went back and I think read the minutes, and it was, um, it was pulled from sure tax money because it was put under um, the Phoenix, the Phoenix construction, and um, that first three hundred thousand, and then another hundred thousand was added for King King Griffin. All right, well, that gives us uh, some things to uh, chew on. Is this something that we want to add to the agenda for Tuesday? Because we're having to vote on this hundred thousand dollars, right? On the budget. Yeah. Now we can vote it in and still not spend it. I mean, we can. You know, that's not a that's not an issue. Um, you know, we can vote it in and still not spend it if we later on decide when it comes time for the splash pads. Um, we need to do i think we, we could vote it in and then we can do feasibility on on, on on options whether to close one and and enhance the other one or close it and do something else at kent's yeah. all for now I really think we got to look at that 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 hard line approach there and just maintenance alone on two splash pads. Is, it's it's pretty. Yeah. I mean, if we 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 get that hundred thousand back, if we only if we went to the one splash pad on maintenance alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. So think about that. Can I, I, can I interject? That? Yeah. No. <laughs> so when you go to Shipwreck Island, if you're going to keep a splash pad, the only thing I'd say is you're going to have to child proof it. And if you look at Shipwreck, their kitty area it has no fault. No. All it's the way rubber. around rubber mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. when you mix uh, i worked out there for years when you mix marsite and water am i correct joe yes sir you're going to slip i think blonde jay shaking his head too so as you look at this if you're going to keep one open i think it's important that you why well, reinvent the wheel get the owners or mm -hmm. the general manager buddy wilkes over here to look at the one you may want to keep open and child proof it and at the end of the day you can sign every waiver in the world but yeah it is what it is point. and then do you train you, they need training as well and I guess the only reason I ask about waivers is because we sign waivers for everything else. That's very true. Yeah, and they're so, shot. They, they fly them like a paper airplane, trust me. Yeah. But anyway, I think if you're going to keep one, you need to make it at least go out to the water park and look at the kitty area and see why they're in that position and why do they have those things there in place because people slip yeah. and you use no fault. You know, but just an idea as a citizen if, if you're going to do it, yeah. keep your kid safe. Good talk. Um, do we need to have any, I guess, discussion on whether or not we want to increase the budget for employees for the splash pad? Or is that something that y'all already have? We have, uh, we have um, four, six part-time people in there right now. In the budget. Four, four part-time. Part and then that is also including my full-time staff that will have to work to when people call in or we don't have enough you know folks to work so they i have four part-time people in there already okay Just but that's that's really not and i'm gonna be very honest with you it is not enough yeah and, and just throwing that out there i'm not saying it's a good idea or a bad idea but have we looked at contracting it out do you think that's a viable option I don't know. I'm not saying yeah, it's a good that's idea. Not a that's not all bad. I, I don't know. If they maintain it and everything, we're still providing it for our residents. Yeah. Let them. Of course, they'll want to charge and then people stop coming. Contracting out splash pads too, though, I guess would be the... I don't know. Well, I haven't found of, anyone. Yeah. I had a light bulb idea. <laughs> <laughs> just threw it out there. The ship yeah. trip. <laughs> Well, that's something we can look at. Yeah. I don't know, like you said, I don't know if there's a business that's in the business of doing that. Maybe like a pool place. I don't know if they could yeah. do something. Like that. Yeah. 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 Contract pool attendants or uh, lifeguards or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, awesome. Wait, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll see you all on Tuesday. Meeting all right. Cool.